Shalom, brothers and sisters. Peace be with you. You know, in our last video, part three, we left the question open there. Uh, was there any evidence that Mashiach appeared in the year 29 CE? And so let's see if that can be answered by looking at Daniel's prophecy about the one week, the extra one week that was added to the 69. And, ex and let's also examine how many years did Yeshua live on this earth after he met John the Baptist and was baptized. Okay, well, we recall in Luke chapter 3, verses 1, 15, 16, and 21, in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, that uh, John, the son of Zechariah, was preaching in the wilderness. People were wondering if he was the Christ, and he says, No, I baptize you with water, but the one stronger than I am, than I am is coming, the lace of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. And then it goes on to say that when all the people were baptized, Yeshua too was baptized. Well, let's go on now to the next chapter, Luke chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. It says, Then Yeshua, this was after he got baptized, Then Yeshua, full of Holy Spirit, turned away from the Jordan, and he was led about by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. So, friends, after Yeshua was baptized, which we know was just around the end of Tiberius Caesar's 15th reign and beginning of his 16th reign in mid-September 29 CE, we know that he was appointed September 17th uh, in the year 14 CE, so his 15th year would be 29. Uh, some say that he was uh, reigned, uh, became emperor September 15th, some sources say that, but it does say that on the, the official Senate uh, calendar, Roman calendar, that it was September 17th. So after that, Yeshua went to the wilderness for 40 days. So Yeshua began his ministry in the fall of 29 CE. So we keep that in mind because he went into the wilderness for 40 days. That was over a month and 10 days. So he started his ministry in the fall of 29 CE. Well, now let's go to the Gospel book of John. Let's compare John and Luke. And let's see, uh, we can trace Jesus' years of his life after this by looking at the Passovers and uh, looking at Yeshua's life there, Jesus. So in John chapter 2, verse 13 through 16, it says, Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and Yeshua went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple those selling cattle and sheep and doves and the money brokers in their seats. So after making a whip of ropes, he drove all those out of the temple. He poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He said, take these things away from here. Stop making the house of my father a house of commerce. So that was the year 30 CE when this Passover was taking place, held in the Jewish month Nisan. Now let's go to John chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. It says, after this, there was a festival of the Jews. And Yeshua went up to, to, to Jerusalem. So this is now Passover in the year 31 CE. Okay, so we have Passover 30 CE. Now we have Passover 31 CE and John chapter 5, according to the Gospel of John. Now, there were two other festivals uh, during the time. There was the Festival of Dedication and the Festival of Purim. And both of those were in the months Chislev and Nisan. However, those festivals did not require Israelites to go to Jerusalem. So we see in this context, this festival of the Jews is referring to the Passover because it required everyone to attend in Jerusalem according to Jehovah's law. So that's why it said there that Yeshua um, went up to Jerusalem. Now let's go on to John chapter 6, the next chapter, verses 1 through 4. It says, After this, Yeshua set out across the Sea of Galilee, or Tiberias, and a large crowd kept following him because they were observing the miraculous signs he was performing in healing the sick. So Yeshua went up on a mountain and sat there from sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. So here's another reference to the Passover, and this would be Passover 32 CE. Let's go on to John chapter 11 now. We're going to read uh, 55 through 57. And then chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and many people from the countryside went up to Jerusalem before the Passover 
to cleanse themselves ceremoniously. Six days before the Passover, Yeshua arrived at Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Yeshua had raised up from the dead. So here we see now another Passover mentioned. This would be Passover in the year 33 CE, according to John chapter 11 and chapter 12. Now let's read portions of John chapter 13, the next chapter. It says, Then the evening meal was going on. So after dipping the bread, excuse me, now because he knew before the festival of the Passover that his hour had come for him to leave the world and go to the Father, the evening meal was going on. So after dipping the bread, he took it and gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Now remember, friends, Yeshua had two disciples named Judas. This one was Judas Iscariot. According to the Gospels, this was the one who betrayed him. Continuing on, it says, After Judas took the piece of bread, then Satan entered into him. So Yeshua said to him, What you are doing, do it more quickly. So after he received the piece of bread, he went out immediately, referring to Judas. And it was night. Where therefore he had gone out, Yeshua said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in connection with him. Little children, I am with you a little longer. So after Judas left, Yeshua and his 11 disciples continued on with the evening meal. Now let's go on. So that so we're in Passover now of 33 CE. Let's read portions of John chapter 18. It says, Then the soldiers and the military commander and the officers of the Jews seized Yeshua and bound him. They led him first to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. Yeshua answered him, I have spoken to the world publicly. I always taught in the synagogue and in the temple where all the Jews come together, and I said nothing in secret. Why do you question me? Question those who have heard of what I told them. Yeshua answered, If I said something wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But if, it, but if what I said was right, why do you hit me? Then Annas sent him away, bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Then they led Yeshua from Caiaphas to the governor's residence. It was now early in the morning. Okay, and now let's read portions of John chapter 19. We're going to tie all this together, friends. So now John chapter 19, it says, Pilate then took Yeshua and scourged him, and the soldiers braided a crown of thorns and put it on his head and clothed him with a purple robe. They kept coming up to him and saying, Greetings, you king of the Jews. They also kept slapping him in the face. So Pilate said, Are you refusing to speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and I have authority to execute you? Then they, he handed him over to them to be executed on the stake. Since it was the day of preparation, so that the bodies would not remain on the or torture stake on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath day was a great one, the Jews asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken away. And according to the Mosaic law there in Deuteronomy chapter 21, dead bodies could not remain all night on the stake. They had to be buried before the next day. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man and those of the other man who was on the stake alongside him. Then on coming to Yeshua, they saw that he was already dead, so they did not break his legs. So we see that Yeshua died on Nisan 14, 33 CE. The Jewish, Jewish month Nisan corresponds with the middle of March to the middle of April. Yeshua's ministry then lasted three and a half years. So we have the first year, that's the fall of 29 CE to September 30 CE. We have the second year, the fall of 30 CE to September 31 CE. And the third year, the fall of 31 CE to September 32 CE. And then we have six months, October 32, November 32, December 32, January 33, February 33, March 33, which would bring you to April 33 CE. But now let's go back to that prophecy in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. Let's take a look at that. Okay. 
So here we are in Daniel chapter 9. And notice, let's read again verse 27, what it said there. Verse 27, it said, He must keep the covenant in force for the many for one week. And at the half of the week, he will cause gift, excuse me, he will cause sacrifice and gift offering to cease. So notice there, brothers and sisters, it said at the half of the week. Remember we said that the one week is in code and actually means not seven days, but seven years, just like the 69 weeks. So this is talking about one week is prof is uh, symbolizing seven years. Okay, friends, so keep that in mind. So, Yeshua, there's pretty good evidence that he was Mashiach and caused that sacrifice and gift offerings under the law to cease because Yehovah sent him to suffer and to die for the sins of dying mankind. Look at all the evidence that we've gone through. He showed up in 29 CE, got baptized, began his ministry for three and a half years. We saw that in the Passovers that he attended. And then, as it says, remember it said, in the middle of the week, well, what is seven divided by two? Three and a half, right? So three and a half plus three equals seven. Excuse me, three and a half plus plus three and a half equals seven. So Yeshua preached. He was cut off in the middle of the week. And that corresponded to April 14th, the day he caused sacrifice and gift offering to cease there. According to the Passover day, Pontius Pilate executed him. So in part five, we will look at secular historical documents about Yeshua and Pontius Pilate, and also another prophecy about when Mashiach will return.